I'm not gonna lie, if I had a relationship and a person said that they were too old and masculine to receive hugs, that might actually be something that would make me want to break up with them. Matt Walsh is a guy. I know that much about him, at least. The video opens with a very sickly Matt Walsh. Well, there is no show today. That's the bad news. I hope he's okay. Explaining why he can't do a show today, and then he just repeats one of his older videos. So, we're actually watching the older video here. I have to admit, the title just... It gives me pause. Matt Walsh gives more relationship advice to the Reddit crowd. I need it, okay? You know, one thing I do uh, sometimes on this channel is dispense relationship advice. It's been a little while since our last relationship advice segment, I think, and uh, I know the couples uh, across America and the world really are hanging in the balance, falling apart, yeah. unsure what to do without my guidance. And so uh, I'm back to, to be that guiding light for you again as we return to the relationship advice forum on Reddit. To now this, by the way, this is genius, okay? This is incredible, all right? A, what does he call himself on Twitter? A theocratic fascist responding to r slash relationship advice, which is the funniest subreddit on earth, by the way. It, it really does not get, it, it does not make for better entertainment than that subreddit. Honest to God, I don't know what I should do here. Should I respond to him or should I just go to relationship advice myself and have some fun? No, let's, let's respond to him, okay? That's what we're, let's not make the title of this future video any more confused than it otherwise might be. I'll give my opinion on what he responds to, okay? To settle these disputes, answer questions, repair broken bonds, Let's check it out. We'll start with uh, this question here says, my girlfriend of two years just revealed to me that she might want to try a one-off every so often in our- Boy, I wonder what Matt Walsh's opinion uh, is gonna be on non-monogamous relationships. <laughs> our otherwise monogamous relationship in which we would message the other person that we're taking a night off, meaning taking someone else home and having sex with them that night. <laughs> so, we're gonna have sex with other people, but otherwise, we're gonna be monogamous. I don't think it means what you think it means. You know, I'm a ve vegetarian other than the three or four times a day that I eat meat. It's kind of a similar thing. For context- Well, I mean, you, technically you could say that, right? Like, I'm a vegetarian except for the one day a week when I eat meat. That, that is a correct statement. The, the analogy works. You could say I'm monogamous except for one day a week. I mean, that would still be a broadly non-monogamous relationship but you would be monogamous except for that one day. So we're talking about sexual preferences and it sort of struck me out of nowhere because she's so far- No, I don't think that works. If you're vegetarian with an exception, that you're not holistically vegetarian, but those days are vegetarian, except for the one day. Vosh, you could just say I'm not a murderer except for the one month I do murder. Yes, you could say that. Yes, the point is that it's a stupid sentence to parse, but it's technically correct. I'm making the technical that's the joke, that it's technically correct. Yes, if you if you leave out the murder, then yes, you wouldn't be a murderer. Obviously, it'd be silly to say it like that because you shouldn't leave out the murder, much in the same way that if you're talking about whether a relationship is monogamous or not, you shouldn't leave out the day when you're not monogamous. That's why it was a joke, because the technical correctness was in dissonance with the practical... All right. Led me to believe she's a pretty possessive and sometimes jealous girlfriend who doesn't like to share her significant other. It came as a little bit of a shock because I definitely wouldn't be okay with it. And she knows that I prefer monogamy in long-term relationships. We tried talking out a little in which I stated my case, but I'm just kind of worried that she might want that in the distant future mm -hmm. if we get engaged and eventually married like we've talked about in the past. Any advice is welcome. Well, you're not gonna- Anyone wanna guess what Matt Walsh is gonna say? My guess is he's just gonna say to break up because to him, the idea of a girlfriend or wife wanting to fuck other men is, is like an inexcusable, like he wouldn't say like maybe like talk about it or maybe do you want to fuck other women or whatever. It's just going to be like she's a whore breakup. That's my guess. I'm not going to get uh, engaged or married because what you're going to do is break up. Bye, Felicia. This, uh, she's asking for permission to cheat. She's probably already cheating. This is probably more of a, this is. Okay, wait, hold on. If you're asking for permission and the permission is granted, it's by definition not cheating. To suggest that they're already cheating, I don't necessarily think that follows. That's, uh, the, the, impl the implicit assertion there is that anyone who would be interested in non-monogamy must have no sexual morals. Which is, of course, what he believes, so... 
more of her seeking validation after the fact for what she's already done. But even if it isn't, she's telling you, I don't, I'm not interested in being committed to you, which means what's the, what, in what sense are you even in a relationship at all? That's an easy one. Just be done with her and break up. Couldn't you, are you not a friend with a person if they're friends with other people? What are the boundaries on potential exclusivity for people like this? I think, so, for, now, for me, I think that, like, most people can't work with a non-monogamous relationship because most people are incredibly insecure when it comes to sex stuff, you know? To, to a lot of people, I just do not think... And look, if you want to say it's not because you're insecure about it, whatever, I don't really care, but I just think for most people, monogamous relationships are probably what works best for them. And a lot of non-monogamous relationships do end up in flames. But then again, so do a lot of monogamous relationships. Anybody who makes the argument that monogamous relationships are inherently stable has never seen monogamous people because they are, because they, because they're blowing up all the time too. It's not, it's not like a super clear line on this. You're in a monogamous relationship, right? I'm not in a relationship right now. I broke up with Vermin like six months ago. Uh, glad we could settle that. All right, next. It says, I feel like I'm not allowed to have my own time. I've been dating my girlfriend for almost half a year now, and it's been mostly great other than her clinginess. Mm -hmm. She's the type to send multiple walls of text while uh -oh. I'm at work, and then when I give her a quick response trying to explain to her I'm busy, she thinks I'm upset at her, which in reality I, I am, and I've tried to explain to her that there's no need to blow my phone up when I'm on the clock at work or at school. I'm trying to explain to her I'm busy, and I've even set boundaries for her to not borderline spam me when I don't reply, but I feel like when I bring this up, she thinks you don't want me to text you at all. She's also tried calling me while I'm at- I've dealt with people like this. This shit, I really hate this. I'm sorry, I get triggered by- I'm getting secondhand triggered right now. I'm getting- I'm getting flashbacks to my adolescence right here. Look, for me, there's nothing wrong- There's nothing wrong with, like, um, having partners who send a fuck ton of messages or whatever, but it has to be reciprocal, you know? You have to be able to kind of, like, get the vibe of how much the other person wants to talk to you, you know? So many people, I think it's mostly guys who don't get this because, and I know that because I've flirted with them, but like so many guys demonstrate a complete inability to read the room when it comes to how interested the other person is in talking, you know? They'll send a big paragraph and they'll get like a one or two word response and then they'll send another big paragraph and then they wait 12 minutes and then send another one angry that they hadn't gotten the first, like that's, yeah, it's very odd to me. Probably shouldn't do that. It's okay also to have a relationship where one person messages way more than the other, but this, at least according to the post, seems like it's more motivated by insecurity than anything. At work, and uh, when I don't answer, she'll text my parents asking if I'm safe. There's also been instances of me having to text her to get her to let me be when I'm hanging out with a friend. Uh, okay, we, I think we get the idea here. Extremely clingy, extremely needy. Once again, I would say break up. Bye, Felicia. Uh, <laughs> Wait. <laughs> okay. Is this going to be, is the meme going to be, this is his response to every situation? Like, we're not going to, like, try to talk about it a little bit more than this? Let, <laughs> I mean, all right. You have very simplistic attitude towards relationships. I suppose I respect the consistency. Uh, now, granted, you guys have been dating for half a year, you'd say, which, uh, which means you've barely been together at all. Okay, so you're, you're still babies in a relationship. And she's still in the infatuation stage of things. And every couple has the infatuation stage when you're sort of obsessed with each other and you need to be around each other 24-7, which there's no love before. The infatuation is, gets in the way of love. There can't be real love because the infatuation sta stage is self-focused. You're obsessed with how this person makes you feel. So it's all about you. She's texting and calling you all the time. Now this feels like some projection to me. There's an underlying truth to what he's saying and it's that it's difficult to know from early on in a relationship whether or not all the all the bones are going to be stable enough for a, a good long-term relationship you know that is true but that can be like a very conditional thing very contextual and over committing to that belief is uh a little odd not because she's actually worried about you, but more that she needs that constant connection with you for her own self. But she doesn't really care if she's intruding on you or not. So it's really not about you at all. It's more about her. Tell me I'm pretty! Tell me I'm pretty! Tell me I'm pretty! There's probably nothing beneath the infatuation except the infatuation itself. 
this is going to be one of those situations where you stay with her, and then in a few months, she gets bored and just breaks up with you all. Okay, this is definitely projection. He's reading a lot of shit into this. Oh my god. She'll go from utterly obsessed with you she, to she doesn't want any, anything to do with you. Yeah, well, just like that. Who or hurt she'll you? Or something. So I just cut this one off now. I mean, general rule here, if you've been dating for only six months, and she's already annoying the hell out of you every second of the day, not a good sign. So I would uh, just leave that one alone. You know, just to cut in here very quickly, you know what this all reminds me of? Oh, hello, magnesium. sick. Magnesium. Especially Magnesium Breakthrough by Buy Optimizer. Listen, if you're having trouble- Nice. Throughway. Oh my god. Wait, from six minutes and 35 seconds. Wow, two minutes. That is shameless. Not only is he re-uploading an old video, he- Two minutes in its center is an ad. That is incredible. Do you guys think I should do that? Is this like the Sigma male grind set approach towards YouTube content production? I don't know, guys. I feel like this might be a good direction for the channel. I'm in to purchase your tickets before they sell out. My husband and I have been together for 13 years, married for five. At the beginning nice. of our relationship, he was super affectionate, holding hands, cuddling with me, the whole nine yards. We've always gotten along great and had a really positive and fulfilling relationship in every sense of the word. Not surprisingly, That's after sweet. being together this long, things have changed. I've noticed in the past year or so that he's been much more physically distant. He's not affectionate at all anymore, and our sex life has dwindled to once a week and seemingly unenthusiastically on his part. When I've asked him about this, he always tells me it's just because he's getting older and isn't interested in sex anymore. About the not being affectionate thing, he says, grown men don't like being hugged and stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, a, that's some Sigma male behavior right there. Holy shit. Jesus Christ. Oh, apparently Pigeon was in here the whole time. Really quick. Hey, keep this in the YouTube video. Hold on, we gotta throw her out. Hold on. Too many people who watch my YouTube videos don't know about this disgusting, ugly skin rat that I love. Look up. 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 There we go. Very wiggly. Yes, a sewer rat. An ugly ball sack baby. But we love her. All right, let me put her back. There's my two minute ad. I'm not going to lie. If I had a relationship and a person said, that they were too old and masculine to receive hugs, that might actually be something that would make me want to break up with them. Like, that, like, that could be indicative of some other shit, like they're cheating and they feel guilty so they don't want any physical affection because doing so reminds them of the trust they're betraying in their partner. But even if it's not something like that, just the sheer audacity. It's a hug. Everyone hugs everyone. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, the final straw was me getting COVID and having to sleep in separate rooms to quarantine. He, stood, he said he still wants to sleep in separate rooms, telling me it's because he sleeps better. We still get along and have a lot of fun. I'm mixed on this. Apparently a lot of new homes are being built with two master bedrooms uh, because some people really do sleep better on their own. That's not just a shitty behavior thing. That's actually a real thing, you know? Like, yeah, 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 some some people snore, some people roll around a lot. Yeah, sleep apnea can be a thing. Some people have irregular sleep schedules and don't want to wake up their partner when they get up or lay down. I'm just going to say, while this it does seem to be part of a pattern, I'm just saying that it's not necessarily nefarious, you know? Fun together, but I feel like at this point, he treats me like a roommate instead of a wife. I don't want to leave him, but I also don't think 30, 38 is too old to give up on a romantic relationship entirely. Uh, okay, so... I'm going to take the opposite approach here and say that breaking up, divorcing shouldn't even be on the table. What worries me the most in this whole thing is that you said, uh, I don't want to leave him, but, right? Like, that shouldn't be in the discussion at all. Of oh, my God. Both of the times that men were the ones writing the posts, he was like, yeah, break up with that bitch. But now the woman's like, hey, my husband's being really weird and I don't want to break up, but, you know, I'm like really upset by this behavior. He's like, you fucking harlot. You despicable whore. You would even consider breaking up with your husband over this? Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's because it's marriage, which he thinks is like sacrosanct and so on. Of course you're not going to leave him for this. That doesn't make him right in what he's doing and how he's treating you, but this is not a divorce situation, not even close to it. This is what's known as a rough patch. Happens in marriages sometimes. 
The only thing that makes it a little bit unusual is the bit where he doesn't want to sleep in the same room, and that you can't allow at all. That's a death knell. The hugging isn't unusual? Oh my god, Matt. I, I knew we were going to get the best takes from this guy. Now, look, the hugging thing, it's true. Past 30, you know, men just don't like hugs anymore. Uh, however, you do need to be under in one room like God intended. Separate rooms? I mean, then you really are roommates. Not to mention if you have kids, the message that sends to them, so that's no good. As for the rest of this, you, you know, you have to let him know what your emotional needs are and that it's not all about him. Uh-huh. But that should be something you could talk about. One other thought here. Married for five years, uh -huh. together for 13. So you were together for- I knew he- I I should have said something. I was wondering if he would make a comment about being together for eight years before getting married. For seven or eight years before marriage. This is maybe yet another reason why long engagements or courtships or dating periods or whatever are not very good because you're hitting this rough Gotta period, get married after two months. way earlier than you should be because you were already eight years in by the time you even walk down the aisle. So what Matt is saying right here is that knowing your partner for a long time before getting married makes the relationship less stable, which is the opposite of the truth. This is the opposite of what is true. The less time you know a person before getting married, the more unstable the relationship is, or the, un the more unstable the marriage is. And that means you hit your rough patch as, you, you know, you hit your rough patch early, and you aren't going to have all these many, many years of marriage behind you as what? to serve as a stable foundation to see you through. And that's part of the problem. You want to what? be sick of each other, like, once you've been married for a while. I'm kidding, of course. I mean, you know, the, the doldrums and the rough patches, it's, it's not inevitable. Not every marriage has them, but it can happen. And uh, I'm suggesting that you're on a bit of a sped up timeline because of your very, very long preseason. So cut the preseason down. Get How does that, wouldn't being married for longer mean you hit these bumps sooner? He's literally making the argument that the more time you wait before getting married, that means that the relationship problems will be worse and more likely like this is the opposite of the case what is time travel possible what is he talking about but this is something conservatives always do right conservatives will also say stuff like it's immoral for you to live together with a partner before getting married by uh to them you know to which my response is never ever 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 get married to a person before you've slept with them stayed in the same house as them you've no fuck you really want to commit your entire life to a person who you haven't lived with are you fucking kidding me you have no idea what kind of habits they've developed. You have no idea what they do or what they're like after you've lived with them for six months or 12 months. You have no idea. You know your roommate better than your romantic partner if you haven't lived with that romantic partner. And I mean that sincerely, okay? You see them when they're at their best. You have to see them all the time. How do they wake up? How do they fall asleep? How annoying are they? Do they have bad social or hygienic habits? There is so much to that. And going on a date with a person represents an incredibly tiny fraction of the overall, like, part of their character you should be concerned with anyway just this is what conservatives always do they just want people like white people marrying 18 years old you know studies disagree with you vosh cohabitation does correlate with higher divorce rates living together before getting married increases divorce rates is that controlled for um for age and other demographic factors or is it just like flat I guess you could make the argument that the type of people who would marry at 18 without having lived together are also the type of people who would stay through that entire marriage if they were miserable, whereas the kind of, you know, suburbanite hipsters who might live together for years before getting married would be more comfortable divorcing. I'd have to look at the data. Right to the main, the, to, to the season. Can't do anything about that now, so I would say just talk it out. Okay. Just talk it out. The other two... With the with the guy, just dump her, bitch. With with the woman, just talk it out. Whatever, talk it out. That's the advice he's giving right now. Talk it out. That's great advice for me. Uh, just talk about it. What do you want me to do? I would make a terrible therapist. Maybe we should chug on over to Mamby Pamby Land, where maybe we can find some self confidence for you, you jack wagon. Okay, one more what here. This says, um... I hate the boomers who edit these videos. What was that even from? What what was that from? Somebody tell me. A commercial? It was a commercial? Okay. An insurance commercial. Okay.
I feel that my girlfriend can be the perfect future wife, but I'm afraid that I met her too early in life. I've been with her for four years since I was 15. She was my first real relationship. She's the one I lost my virginity to. We've had our ups and downs, but everything right now is going great. Nice. She's really mature for her age, and that's why I think she'd be a good wife. My problem is that I don't know if I want to spend my whole life having only been with one woman. Oh, wait. Wonder, wonder, what, wonder what Matt Walsh is going to say about this one. She's the only one I've ever had sex with, and I fear that my romantic and sex life will become boring due to the lack of diversity. I don't even know if sex is that great since I don't have any other references. Adding to that, there's a few girls that are interested in me. And sometimes when I think about it, I find myself wanting to no, be- No, I laughed because the phrase, she's mature for her age, is like one of the fucking catchphrases of groomers. But they're both the same age, so it doesn't apply here. So he just, you know? With them. So basically, I want to live my youth and have a few experiences with different women, but I don't know if I can leave my girlfriend because I don't know if I'll be able to find a wife as good as her in the future. Okay. Give it, Matt. So she could be the perfect wife, but you want to find someone who is what? More perfect? More pussy. You want references? What is yes. this? A job search? You, you want to... Yeah, it's actually pretty good to get some references and perspective on people in your life. Yeah, that's actually totally true. Yeah, 100%. I want to be able to compare her to other women for yeah why for what reason to know what you like no, and you, you got to grow up son this 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 isn't even a grass is greener on the other side situation because you don't think the grass is greener as you admit you just think that it might be different it's different grass and you want a you want different grass for difference for the sake of difference yeah grass <laughs> different for difference's sake or yeah. diversity as you put yeah. it yeah wait wait yeah what yeah, even yeah What's wrong with any of that? This is, you know what this is like? I'll tell you what this is like. This is like when you're walking through an airport and there's a pot belly sandwich shop right there, but you say, no, 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 no. I'm not going to get the sandwich there. Even though I know it's delicious, I'm going to keep walking, see if I find something better. Maybe there'll be something better at my gate. And then you get to your gate and all there is is like a kiosk with a refrigerator and some soggy sandwiches and saran wrap and maybe a cup of like macaroni salad or something i love this analogy because it actually proves my point and it's not getting a sandwich it's which sandwich stop you spend the rest of your life at we're talking about a lifelong commitment right so yeah you'd probably want to check out the whole airport bef to see every restaurant before choosing one to spend the rest of your life at we're talking about commitment here so yeah, spending a little bit of time in your youth to figure out what you want and then making a commitment actually seems like a pretty reasonable thing to do. It's not like we're talking about a limited length of time here. The dude's 19, Christ. And um, Yeah, the plane is going to heaven and it's taking off in 60 years, Matt Walsh, okay? You've got a long time, though depending on what that kid go, uh, does, he might have to <laughs> board the plane going to hell. But he's got a, <laughs> he's got a long time to figure out what he's into, okay? But it's too late to go back to the pot belly. You've 60 years. This analogy is not very good. So let's just just take that as advice on how to handle it. I think the only problem is the kid might not be able to get this girl back. Well, that's a conversation you should be able to have, right? I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with talking about non-monogamy with people that you're attracted to or people that you've been in a long-term relationship with. Now, sometimes that's going to end poorly. But if that's something that you're interested in, I mean, what do you do then? Just bottle it up and live your entire life full of regret? People should talk about things they want. I agree, but I think that's why he's asking. Oh, I know why the kid's asking. The kid's in a tough position. I just think Matt Walsh is kind of an idiot. Airports and where to find food. As for relationships, when you find the person who you know would make a good and devoted and loving spouse, you've won. You've completed the game. Congratulations. The thing is, though, you don't actually really know. Come on, how many times have you heard this story? I had my first love from high school, we got married right after high school, and only afterwards did all of the red flags start to show up, and then later I ended up partnering with somebody in my mid-twenties who was so much better for me, and I didn't even realize what I wanted back when I was a little kid. Who you are in high school is not who you are in your twenties, is not who you are in your thirties, and etc, etc. There's no such thing as, like, a permanent character. Everything changes and everything shifts around, and under those circumstances, the idea that when you're in high school you find... Not only do you find the right person, but also you know everything you need to know before committing to that person. That's a pretty rough sell mathematically. It's not impossible, but that's 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 the objective. You've come. That's you're there. No need to keep looking, continuing to date and sleep around and whatever. None of that is going to help you in the long run. And you'll be you'll, what you're practicing then is just basically disloyalty, heartbreak, breakups. 
Okay, so we're again with the Christian morality is seeping into this again. You have no idea whether or not it'll lead to anything because the next person they find might actually be better. You have no idea how these things plan out. And how is it disloyalty? If you're not in a relationship and you're sleeping around, is that disloyalty? Just like doing regular hookups? Um, that's the experience you'll be getting. It's disloyalty and that's to the God. the experience you're going to bring right. into your marriage when eventually you do go down that road, a road that you could have walked years before. Don't make that mistake, young man. And uh, take what is right in front of you. And that is my fatherly lecture for the day. I don't know okay, if- Fatherly lecture. Any of this advice will be useful to any of you, except for the airport bit. That is really important. When you see the pot bellies, go for it. Um, but there it was. If you uh, want- Yeah, that last question is really difficult. And it's something that I think a lot of people struggle with, you know? See, we're all gamers here, aren't we? Everybody wants to min-max their relationships, you know? They're always thinking, what's the best for me, you know? Who's the, who's the best for me? Um, the problem is that kind of logic doesn't always apply to relationships, you know? That is to say, the multifaceted nuances of individuals and the way they engage with their partners are so complicated that oftentimes it can be nearly impossible to have a full and perfect assessment of who will be good for you and who will stay good for you in the future. That is really difficult to figure out. As a general rule, I think that if you're happy with the person, you should stay with them, that this grass is always greener, like wanderlust tends not to work out in people's favor. But it really depends on what you become acclimated to. Because the issue is, I've talked to people who have been in relationships for a long time and are having problems with them, but they're not sure if they should break up. And the severity of those problems varies wildly. I have known people who have wanted to break up in these relationships because, like, uh, I don't know, like, we don't, like, have the same friends, really, and I don't know. And I knew from the context of this conversation that this was a fairly trivial concern. And I've known people who are like, oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, sometimes he throws stuff at me, and one time he, like, grabbed me by the wrist and threw me against the wall and said that if I left him, he would kill me. But, like, I don't know. Like, sometimes guys are just aggressive. It's a, like, this is the variance with which people have doubts about their relationship. So I don't really know if there's any effective blanket statement that you can make uh, about whether or not... Some people have very different red flag thresholds. I'll put it that way. Um, of course, this is a solution that is made infinitely more complicated by the potential for non-monogamy, which is getting more popular in some communities these days. I'll say this much though, there's a very big difference between non-monogamy, which I think can be practiced reasonably and without too many issues, if the people involved know what they want and are into that sort of thing, and polyamory, which is a whole other goddamn motherfucking thing. Polyamory is a whole other thing, okay? The basic difference is that non-monogamy just means that you're not sexually exclusive, but polyamory tends to imply that you're capable of holding multiple relationships, you know? Not like you have one partner but you fuck around, but multiple relationships. And that stuff can get really complicated. Yeah, I mean, you say don't try for the harem route. Some people are built for that kind of stuff, and if you do it, maybe you get to live your entire life like that without many worries, you know? Um, but I think that's a very small minority of people, so I wouldn't say you should just dive on into that. It, uh, it varies tremendously. When are you going to do a relationship advice stream? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of talking about that right now. I don't know if I could dedicate a whole stream to something like that, but there's, a uh, yeah, it's, I just, um, <laughs> I just think it's, it's the kind of thing that you should go into very, very cautiously. The main issue, though, is that, um, with regards to open relationships in particular, because isn't that the real thing people worry about relationship? The real problem people have with relationships is the concept of exclusivity. Exclusivity is the only reason relationships are a trade-off, really. Without exclusivity, there's always the potential for things you don't like to be supplemented or made up for by other people. The issue with all of that um, <laughs> is that, <laughs> oh god, it's just so difficult to know whether that's going to work for you. Aren't non-monogamous relationships prone to being one-sided? Yeah, they are, unfortunately. And it does happen fairly often that, like, a more non-monogamous person, like, one person will be more non-monogamous than the other person, like, even if they're both nominally non-monogamous. 
and then it can get difficult to like ascertain the extent to which there's like an acceptable emotional availability for this or for that or for the other. It's so difficult to manage. Look, you know what you should do? You know what the best solution to all of this is? Unironically, you know what the best solution to all of this is? All right? The best solution is to build a strong and reliable friend group, okay? You know? Sort of a little bit of a kind of, you know, maybe on-off friend group. Maybe they're a little bit more romantically available than your average gamer bro friends. You know? And you sleep around from time to time with some of these people. Some of them are friends with benefits. Some of them are friends generally. I think that when you lead into relationships from, from friendships, you give yourself the opportunity to know a lot more about people than you would if you date into relationships. You know what I mean? There's a reason why people talk positively about, like, friend into relationship. And I think that's because you get a lot of the preceding groundwork laid out. You know what I mean? But then the other issue is that if you just open with friends with benefits stuff, it could just be you're lustful and all your decisions are going to be made off of... Yeah, and sometimes friends want to stay casual too. It's, it's, uh, it's difficult. It's hard out there.